All right. Hey, everybody, this is the blended family guy. Just want you to know that we are doing it big today. All right, I have my amazing wife, special guest in Kim McQuitty, two-time author of Wife Ready. And give me that other book, Me, My Man, and His Music. So here's the thing. Okay, there it is right there. I'm just letting you know, if you have a spouse that's in music, you've got to get this book because I have a wife that's in music and it helped me in reading in reading the book, taking out those excerpts. It helped me understand why she's so crazy, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Y'all, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Jesus, please, please. Thank you. Jesus, Jesus, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding, y'all. It is gonna be a great show. Then um, in a few minutes, the ladies are gonna take over. I have an engagement I couldn't miss so the ladies are taking over in about 15 minutes. And I think it's actually going to really introduce a really great dialogue between two wonderful women, um, Kim McQuitty. I respect her to the highest levels. And again, my amazing wife. So it's going to be a great discussion. A um, little bit of background. If this is your first time joining the Blended Family Guy, I'm just telling you, the show is about adding value in blended family life. And that's not in the, the typical sense of blended families, but in terms of the harmony between your work, your life, your career, your relationships, right? So you're gonna sometimes see segments on this show that are about business, but I will always have wherever there's business, there's relationship and wherever there's relationship, there better be some family or you're mm -hmm. in trouble. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's why the blended family guy, I am about your family at work. Because if you're going to be successful at work, you better have some people in your corner, right? You can't make it on your own. So it's going to be an amazing conversation. This is the blended family guy, Marcus Holmes, my wife, Crystal. We have a 25-year-old daughter um, that um, we are super proud of, mm -hmm. super proud of. We have a seven-year-old son that is our world, right? And we have two amazing kids. My wife knows I wanna adopt about 10 more children because I love having kids around the house and she's looking at me, I don't care. I'm saying it confidently. Yeah. She knows I love I right. love children. <laughs> so I think she might let me have one. Um, I, see, I see right now we have, we have Taria on. Hey, Taria, what's going on? Great evening to you as well. Um, I just want y'all to know it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic episode. We're about to dig right in. We're about to dig right in. Kim just happened to be in town. And she and, and I'm so glad she reached out. Um, I'm her little brother. She reached out and, and said, you know what, Marcus, I'm in town. And I was like, this is going to be this is awesome. You know why? I get a chance to be, you have, you be on my show. And y'all, she's about to release an incredible book called Unsaved the Day. Mm. I'm talking to women and men, their husbands, mm -hmm. their wives, you know, doing this coaching thing. And there are some people who said, you know what? We've been married 29, 30, 20, 40 years. Mm. And guess what? I should have unsaved the date 40 years ago. Y'all, y'all, now, now, some, some of my coaching clients, um, y'all, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> it's, it's amazing that people will stay together for 30 and 40 and 50 years. And in the back of their mind, they're saying, you know what? I should have unsaved the date. So we're trying to help you. Ken is here to help you before you're 40 years in saying, you know what? And you have kids and you have real estate and you have wealth. And now you got to figure out how to split all that and manage the emotional trauma of a divorce. So Kim is here to speak the truth. I hope you listen. This is what I need y'all to do, though. Share this yes. broadcast right now across social media. Tell your girlfriend who doesn't want to listen to you. You've told your girl I, you shouldn't marry the guy. You've told her. You've told her. There's some warning signs and she ain't listening to you. So you know what? Just put messenger 
this broadcast to her <laughs> and just say, hey, I just need you to listen to this. They, they're giving away a car or something. Oh, it's Oprah yeah. Sunday yeah. just so she can maybe get a tidbit of this information and see what it's all about. Because Unsaved the Day, I love it. The, the title alone is yeah. not just catchy, but it's, it's, it's real. I want y'all to know. I almost unsaved the date on Crystal, y'all. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I didn't, babe. I'm just kidding. Because I didn't unsave so the crazy. date. I'm yeah, scared, yeah. I, it's because I was so crazy. I, I knew. No, I'm just kidding. Goodness. I didn't. I didn't. I don't regret <laughs> saving the date for me and my wife, April 14th. We've been married just over 17 years, awesome. and I love awesome. my wife. Made it. This Ooh. is the only woman that matters to me. I'm madly in love with Crystal Ooh. Holmes. Um, and you can tell. Yeah, and, and y'all, I'm just letting y'all know, um, this is something that I love for my wife. And then y'all, I gotta go, right? This is something I love about my wife. She, after 17 years, the, I, I'm, a, I'm a person, um, my love language is um, service, right? So I show I love my wife by just doing. I do what I need to do. That's what men should do anyway. You gotta do, you know, I'm a man. But my love language is service. The one thing I love that my wife still does after 17 years, whenever I take her out to eat, we eat as a family, my wife still to this day, and it means the world to me. She always says, thank you. And she doesn't do it just to say, she always says, thank you. And it means the world to me, y'all, that after 17 years, it's our money, right? It's our money. My wife works hard. She has a thriving music business. Our money, but when we take we all to eat, she still says thank you. That means a lot. So y'all, why do I say that? As a married person, you sometimes have to find that one thing. And I have a lot of things, but I'm just saying sometimes you have to focus on that one thing that that spouse is doing that you really appreciate and hold on to that sometimes when there's a storm or there's an argument, mm -hmm. right? And that's one thing I do love. My wife, I, I think it, I can't remember where we ate this past weekend. She just said, thank you. Thanks for dinner, babe. She doesn't go all, she just says, thank you. She didn't have to. It's our money. We're eating together, but she always says, thank you. And I appreciate that. So that being said, y'all, we're about to dig in it. The ladies are taking over. I got to go, but I sure, I'm sure there's going to be an amazing show. Um, Kim, Thank you so much. When we get down to Atlanta this summer, Kim, yes. we'll be coming to see you. Um, I got to see my my other big sister, mm -hmm. Sonia Williams, mm -hmm. down there in Atlanta. But um, we'll be coming to see you because we got to go visit Crystal's best friend, Donna, um, uh, with their second child and just want to spend some time with family and friends. So that being said, y'all, I'm out. But y'all are in some good hands with two incredible women talking about unsaved the date. Remember, share this broadcast. It's going to be an amazing one. All right. Talk to y'all soon. I'll see y'all next week. But you got you got two. You got you got it. Y'all got it. We're going to just look. I want to scooty scoot. Oh, y'all just scoot. Y'all, they scoot me on out. Yeah, I'm out of this thing. going to scoot him on out. Okay. This is not my usual attire, as you all probably know. But we had Astros Day. So we were dressed, having a good time with Major, um, playing some ball, and he's getting me set up. Well, not watching them play ball. So hi, I'm, Ebony. Hey, y'all. I'm just showing the misses how to navigate our tool. So whenever you want to show um, the comments, all you do is just click show. Ebony Garcia, we see you. <laughs> I, I mean, Ebony Witt and her amazing husband Garcia. So yes. all you do is just keep scrolling up, baby girl. You just scroll up. Yeah. I like this because this is like an apple and anything else that is there you go. beneath me. And Ebony witnessed our <laughs> union, babe. Ebony witnessed the union. So y'all yes. go ahead, ladies. Y'all got it. So I have a dear friend that, that's been with me since we connected almost 18 years ago or 19 years ago as far as with just getting to know one another. And, um, you know, has just watched us, you know, through mm -hmm. from the very beginning. You know, we were in college. Man. That's right trying to figure out life. And we had a lot of people that, um, as a matter of fact, when we celebrated our anniversary, I called Pastor Robinson and I said, we made it to 17 because he's so much a part of our marriage mm -hmm. that he's like that, 
Yeah, yeah. I feel like we yeah. are married. Yeah. We're together. With you. Yeah. He was celebrating with us. He's like, oh my goodness, it's all right. Oh no, y'all. All right, y'all. Y'all, so we're I, this is hard for me, right? Go, it's hard for me, but unsaved the day, Kim. When is when is unsaved the date coming out? It's coming out yes. July. July. Exactly. The book will be out in July. All right, so I want to do another show when you drop it, and we're going to be giving away ten books to yes. you know women, men that awesome. need it. You don't have to be engaged. You don't have to be you, engaged. You got to be married. Y'all you need be this. Desire to be in a relationship. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Can so, we do this just so while we're here? How do I? How do they go about getting the book? What, is what they can do is go to wifeready.org and sign up to be on a mailing list. Okay. And when the book comes out, we'll let them know how they can pre-order starting in June. Awesome. Can okay. we in it? Can you put that on there? We'll just. Yeah, you can okay. see, see. You got okay. it, baby. <laughs> All right. Safe travels, Marcus. Thank you. All right. All right. Awesome. All right. So we've got that. Spectacular. So I am so interested in this title. Mm hmm. I am just, you know, how many people have ever heard of the term unsave the date? I can tell you this is the first time I've heard this, okay? We all want to save the date. You know, when you think about a wedding, you think about, all right, this is our date. We're planning on moving forward. Nothing's going to change it, you know, but we're talking unsaved. unsaved so tell me, tell me where that title came from. It came from the concept of women are all about the wedding day. Mm. They're all about planning for the wedding. They're all mm. about the relationship hashtag goal mm. on um, Pinterest. Everybody's over preparing for the wedding, but who's mm. preparing for the marriage? Oh, wait a minute. So what we do a lot on here. <laughs> when it's the good thing. When it's that good thing like that, everyone. Did y'all hear that? They're preparing for the wedding, but who's preparing for the marriage? For Billions the of dollars are being spent mm. on wedding prep. You got TV shows surrounding wedding prep. Say say yes to the dress. Four weddings. Oh. Uh, all kind of cake shows. Everything is about getting the woman down to the altar. But who walks with her through the life, you know, the journey of marriage? Oh, man. And the reason why, you know, we want everyone who's gotten married or has a wedding, want everyone to be there. So they send out save the dates to make sure that this date is set aside for you to be there to yes. witness when I take this when I decided to get into this relationship, when I'm joining my life with the love of my life. Yes. But unsaved that they came from, I'm a premarital counselor. Mm. So I have an opportunity to speak to a lot of couples and I've been in women's ministry for over 20 years. So I've been speaking into the lives of women and couples for quite a long time. Yes. And everyone's focused on the actual wedding. Yes. I'm thinking, but when they come to me in the, in the premarital counseling session, I'm preparing them for the marriage. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, the concept of, the women's ministry and the premarital counseling wife ready was born. Mm. I'm thinking these women have to be prepared because it's more than just the witty hashtag. Uh, it's so more than more. just finding the dress. It's more than just the, the picturesque or how you said that venue It's more than mm -hmm. just the cake tasting. Mm -hmm. You're signing up for something permanent. Mm. When you said the cake, I thought about a cake and, and, the, and we're, you know, concerned about the ingredients in the mm -hmm. cake to mm -hmm. me. I want to know it's a good cake. And I think that, you know, a lot of times we see beautiful cakes. We're like, oh, the decorations are so nice. But if mm -hmm. the inside of that cake doesn't taste good, it's all about the foundation. Yes. And that's what yes. it sounds like you're yes. saying, because all the other stuff that you mentioned, that's like the stuff that, you know, that's the after, yeah. you know. But and, what's and have most people won't even remember it. Who's going to remember? I don't remember the wedding. The last wedding I went to, I can't even tell you what flavor the cake was. You don't even remember. I can't even yeah. remember, you know, but I know what their marriage is like, you yeah. know, by looking at them and, you know, and over time and things like that. So yeah. my goal is to help women prepare for the journey mm. and the marathon of marriage. The marathon. The, the marathon, marathon of marriage. marriage. It's a marathon. It's a marathon with no finish line. Woo! Okay. Marriage is a marathon with no finish line. Before and you he gets out of here, we're going to look. We're going to be able to pull these. Okay, here we go. I got to say, I got to get that in. Marriage is, is a, a marathon. marathon with no finish line. And you can't quit just because you get tired. Did y'all hear that? You can't quit because you get tired. You have to push through and you know mm. make it to the end. So it's a, it's not a spread. It is a marathon with no finish line. So the book is all about helping women and what that looks like beforehand. Getting ready is not about being perfect. It's about Absolutely. being wise. 
Absolutely. And there are so many issues that I know going into my marriage, uh, I was 20 years old, that I just mm. didn't know. I didn't know that I needed to know. I didn't yeah. know I needed to be emotionally healed. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that my parental impact of my life was going to have a huge impact in my marriage because that was the model that I sought for mm. in my own life. Mm. You know, but that wasn't what my husband needed at the time. You and know, so even in, 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 did you guys hear that? So even in, in marital counseling, premarital counseling, you can get information that will help you to be a good parent, things oh, that you yes. don't think about mm -hmm. because you're not thinking about that. No, you're not thinking about, you're not thinking yeah. about that. And they have the greatest impact on you negatively and positively. Absolutely. I talk about that in the book about your parental impact is everything because there's two things you, when you, you bring it to in a marriage, your expectations and your experience. Mm. Your expectations. Your expectations and your experience. Mm. Your expectations of what you believe marriage will be. Right. And your experience of what you saw model. What you saw a model, you. whether it be like by your yeah. parents or friends or family yeah. members. And then right. and then those may not be fit into the continuity of who you are. Mm. When a when a couple comes together, they're coming together with two suitcases. Two. I call them baggage. Okay. He has a suitcase, she has a suitcase. Yes. And in that lifetime of marriage, you having this bag that you're that you're going to pull things out on this journey. You know, bags are things that you're going, you need on this journey. You, as you, 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 you're out and you need things as you're progressing on the journey. When you get angry, you go into your suitcase and you deal with anger the way you want to. And he goes into it and deals the way he wants to. And then yes. you're coming together trying to deal with it two separate ways. And it has nothing. It's not fitting into who you are as a couple. You have to unlearn some things, rework some things. Uh, re rearrange some things when you get married. It's not going to be the way that you always did That's it, right. or not the way that he always did That's it. Right. So I talk a lot about the expectations and experience and unrealistic expectations is huge in relationships mm. because you're coming in and wanting want, wanting something from something. First of all, they may not be able to give you. Okay, they don't. They're ignorant of or mm. unwilling to provide. Wow, and yeah. that can be very disappointing in relationships because most marriages out of the the out of first time marriages, only seventy five percent of them excuse me, 75% of them are just surviving. surviving. Only 25 are actually thriving. Mm. And what I didn't understand when I first got married is that marriage is work. It's work. You just, I know. It's a lot It's not just work. a fairy tale. It's not. It's and not. It's never going on a pilot. And you know what? Like, I, I thought about something. Um, I don't know if it was from the Titanic or, you know, when they looked into each other's eyes and he said, you complete me or something. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I heard someone preach it so well. I think they said, you know, one plus one equals one. Like you really have to be completely a whole person. Mm -hmm. You can't be, you know, half a person. And then you expect that person to fill in the gap yeah. for who you are yeah. or like your missing parts. Oh, me having that person is going to make, you know, make me better or mm -hmm. fix those mm -hmm. problems. And that's really not what it is. You There's know? just meant to compliment you, not complete you. Meant to compliment mm. Did it's just a compliment. That? You don't complete it's to, two holes going into yes. it, to this, in this to this thing together, not two broken pieces. Yes, trying to fit together. Yes, you know who you are, and you're not. And you're going into this thing already whole. Yes, That's another thing talking about wholeness, because if you're not healed from the last relationship that you've gone through, yes, the next man's going to pay for what the last man did to you. Ooh. You have to yeah. be whole. Yeah, and he and he won't even know you. You won't even. You're not going. To, you're not trying to hurt that person. It's not his fault. It's brokenness. Anytime something is broken, there's a, a a sharp edge. It's really sharp. You break some glass. You you prick up against it. You're gonna for the most part. You're gonna hurt yourself and you're gonna bleed. That's just what emotional being hurt and brokenness is. Yes. I if you're. I've always said hurt people hurt people. If yes. I'm brushing up against you, something that I've said that triggers something that somebody did to you, I'm gonna get the backlash. But what Paul did to you in your last relationship, and I had nothing to do with it. Yeah, nothing. Because I'm still broken from the last one. Right. And you have to be healed. You yeah. have to be whole going into this relationship, or you're just going to repeat the same pattern over and over and over. Today. And it's not fair. Not it's fair not to you. Fair to and you it's not or... fair to the to the man that you married. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. You know, so many people that have done just that. You know, if you know anyone who may have had a, a, a another, or is maybe entering into a relationship mm -hmm. right now. Um, from a painful relationship and they're experiencing that, you know, they're experiencing some hurt, uh, you know, giving maybe a, a hurtful exchange. You know, I know someone that, thank God, you know, a, a really dear friend of mine, you know, during our marriage, I remember her uh, entering into a situation where it looked like her marriage was declining while we were getting ready to enter into marriage. Mm -hmm. And the Lord used her to really help us you know, I feel like, you know, she was like an angel for me, helping me to beautify and get things ready. But I was watching what she was going through. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, wow, Lord, what is the lesson in this? Because while we were getting ready, 
to enter in. They were, you know, she was in the process of exiting. There were some things that were happening. Well, then a couple of years later, there comes another relationship. But in that, there was some, they were just bumping, bumping. Mm -hmm. And there were things that happened that um, I believe could have been prevented had there been the proper counsel and the proper advice. And then, you know, because thank God, I mean, they're, you know, they're still here. Mm -hmm. And I believe there's a testimony in that. Yeah. But, you know, there are a lot of things that we don't want to have to go through, y'all. I mean, yes. I know me. Yes. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to have to go through that. I want to get some good advice to help keep my marriage together. And for those people who are, are looking to be married, you want advice. Yes, Believe me. As much as you can from the right source. From the right source. Not mm -hmm. just, yeah. And we're and really a Christian perspective. This is what our show is all about. Uh, I'm grateful because I know that that's the perspective that we're mm -hmm. looking at. Absolutely. There is a worldly perspective yes, towards is. marriage. Mm -hmm. And I believe in the end of that, there's destruction. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's yes. coming straight from me. Yes. That's not the Bible. The Bible uses yes. that scripture different. But I think there's destruction when we listen to the advice that's not laced in the word of God, because what happens is we start definitely they're all about materialism mm -hmm. and about self gain and about doing what feels right. But well, we God know, created marriage. He created, he, he, so why, why not let the, the architect help you design something wonderful for your relationship and yeah. anything he created, he created to be successful 100 percent of the time. Absolutely. And the blueprint for your marriage is it is found in the word. It's found in the word. It is That's found it. in the word of God. Yeah. So did y'all hear that? It is his design. It's his he design. Created he created it. it. So, you know, I have friends and I, I, I love y'all and y'all are married. And you know what? Maybe your relationship with the Lord is not where you're like, okay, I'm truly believing. But you have to understand you entered into a contract, a contract. that was a godly idea. Mm -hmm. So even if, you know, this is a God idea, it's a God covenant. So perhaps a lot of the reasons why the challenges are there is because you have to go back to the manufacturer. You do. Yeah. You can't you, yeah. you can't find it anywhere else. And 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 the what's the the instruction book, the manufacturer's guide, the thing that we never mm -hmm. read whenever we get into something, we just jump I'm I'm notorious for buying something new and we just want to take it out the box and make it start working. Make I it start working. You don't want to read, read it. it. The Bible is yes. a manual, basic yeah. instructions before leaving earth. Yes. It's the acronym Bible. Ebony just said you can't get advice from ungodly people. No, you know, not if you want a godly marriage. marriage. Yeah. Not, not if you want a godly marriage. Not if you want a godly marriage. It's not if real. you want God in the you have to have him at the center because only the love of God can help you love another person, an imperfect yes. person. Yes. You can't do it in your own strength. You can, I mean, in, in, usually when a couple gets married, they get together, the first two years are your fourth. That's when all the love is there and the feeling of love. Yes. Love is not a feeling it's a part of it but it's not uh, a feeling absolutely so it's it's not as it don't take as much work in mm -hmm. the beginning because you're still riding on the high right you call high. them drugs yeah <laughs> it's like when, <laughs> when you first get married it is but when that euphoria wears off mm -hmm. and the and the the uh everyday pressures of life start changing your relationship you have to have a plan in place you yes. have to have something in place in order to get you through that absolutely and the work and the foundation you talked about a little about that a little bit ago you have to have a foundation where's your foundation built on right because it's not if the storm comes, it, it's, it's when, when it comes. Come on, it's because coming. the enemy hates marriage. He yes. hates your marriage. He hates anybody. He hates relationships because if he can tear up your marriage, he can tear up families. He can yes. tear up communities. He can tear up churches. He can tear up mm. schools. He can, he can tear up generations. So can I, is it safe to say that marriage is really, it's the strong root of the world that we live in? Mm -hmm. Because you just said family, community, you know, churches. You know, generations. Think about that, because you know, in the we'll say in the in the sense of the mother and the father, you know, coming together. That means that we're now going to have children, and out of that, we're going to now go into the community, mm -hmm. and then even out of that relationship, whether it's blended, because of course our story we we deal with a lot is blended families. Okay, the enemy, oh, he can't stand that, because yeah. now here's somebody saying, oh, you want to step in and you want to correct maybe what somebody wasn't able to do, or you want to step in because maybe there was a loss a deficit in the home and you want to come in and if a, if, a, if, a, if there's a loved one that passed and you want to take the place so that that child isn't lacking there's there's war that comes for that because he doesn't want success right. he doesn't exactly. want there to be victory yeah. so that's why marriage is so crucial it is crucial. having a healthy yeah one. and you can tell when a child is from a broken home mm. a lot of times you can, all, you can yeah. tell they yeah. have those daddy issues and those yeah. father fractures and 
and it, and not just fathers, it's some the mothers too. You right. know, we have yeah. society now where mothers are, are leaving home, but if they can get the foundation right, and the foundation has to be on the word of God, mm. it has to be, and wife ready is, is a faith-based organization. Yes. Because yeah. there's no true change without the word of God. Mm. If there's there no is no change. there, you cannot affect change without the word. It's just impossible. And the mm. marriage has to be rooted in the word of God. Yes. So I talk about a lot of things in the book, in, in the book uh, Unsafe Today. Are you wife ready? It's mm. all about preparing women for marriage beyond the wedding day. Yes. After the wedding day, all the festivities are gone. What does it look like to wake up the next day? Mm. What does that look like moving forward? And what does it mm. look like to marry someone who's had told them? different philosophy of life yes and our uh, premarital counseling we talked about that so mm -hmm. much comes out of premarital counseling and that's so important yeah. because you actually get a chance to see you know a, pers a, pers a side of a person that you question that you may not even have thought to ask yes. that someone can ask you and you can kind of walk through but there's so many things that have to be talked about your finances yes how many kids you're going to have mm -hmm. what happens if a parent gets sick are they going you're going to let them move in what happens if we move out of state and all my uh, family's in the same yeah. state you so know, I, you got to talk about all of that. Yes, all, yes. all of that. You don't get to. I mean, your husband and the wife, you are a unified front. Yeah. And you and, and whatever is the best for your family is what you have to do moving forward. It's yes. not about what anybody else says. I was counseling a girl and she was like, you know, my mom will have a fit if I don't come home for Christmas. Mm -hmm. She said, I, she said, that's what we do yeah. every year. She said, I said, she said, how do I get past that? She said, what, what do I do? She said, how do, what do I, I mean, I have to be over there for Christmas. I said, you know what? You said I do. Mm. I do means whatever that looks like for your family at that particular time is what you do. Mm. You know, it's no more about me. It's about we. Mm. And what does that look like about me? Yes. A lot of girls, um, I talk about in the book, they're privileged to be able to have, be able to support themselves. Mm -hmm. They have great jobs. They have degrees. They're in their thirties. They have their own independence. Independent women. And they've always took care of themselves yes. and they're not others conscious. Mm. You have to start being others conscious before you get married. Now that's deep. Okay. Did you hear that, Camille? Camille, that's for you, honey. I love you. Uh, <laughs> you have to be that's, that's good. Conscious. You have, you know, because you, yeah, you have, because you're not thinking about anybody but yourself. Yeah, and and it, you know, I know, you know, like we, we were talking about our children, and I was just thinking. I said, you know, my daughter, you know, she's she's very independent right now. Thank God, you know, she has not uh, had any children out of wedlock. She's not dealing with that. She is you know, forward on forward on her career. She wants to be successful. Um, but I think these are some of those nuggets yes. that as you are preparing and it's not saying, OK, he's going to come knock on your door next month or next year. Mm -hmm. We don't know when. But I do know that those are some things that, wow, you know, if I was in that place where I see her and I see a lot of her girlfriends, a lot of, you know, college graduate, master's degree, going on to school, getting their careers going they're not uh, in the parental role as, mm -hmm. you know, 20s, mm -hmm. you know, right now they're they're focused on their career. But that is something that just because you're focused on your career at some point, if you desire to be somebody's wife. Yes. You need to go ahead and start getting this information in you. So if you know someone out there and I'm calling Camille out, I'm probably going to get in trouble. But I love you, Camille. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's awesome. You know, just to think that one day. You're going to be someone's wife and you've got to learn to, as you said, be others conscious. Be others conscious. It's not just you, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, as an only child, you know, oh, I, had to, yes. I needed yes. some help, mm -hmm. even even, you know, as a young mom and, you know, my whole story with that. But just now I'm someone's wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to really, you know, because I was used to taking care of me. I was used to even before that. It was like my family did for me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, me and my daughter, and now it's us. And yes, yes. So I had a paradigm to, shift in the yeah, thinking. It yes. was a shift. It was a shift in the thinking. Absolutely. And another, one of the first steps I would recommend someone who's wanting to get married or preparing to get married. And first, let me say the book isn't just for women who are engaged. Unsaved the date is a catchy title to kind of, it's a head turner. It's like, yes. okay, unsaved the date. What does that mean? What does that yes. look like? But it's not just for the woman who's engaged with the ring and the date. Yeah. You're engaged with the ring and the date because an engagement, engagement is a step, not a status. Mm. You shouldn't be walking around mm. three or four years with a ring or with no wedding date. We talk about that. My in the God, book. my God. But oh. it's for the single woman who yes. desires marriage. And it's for the divorced woman who wants to know what, maybe what went wrong in my marriage. That's what good. happened in my marriage? So I would say the very first step, you want to know what's the first step of becoming wife ready is to know who you are. Know who you are. Your worth and value is everything.
thing. The woman has to know she is the prize mm. and she is the upgrade. Mm. She has to know who she because when you know who you are, you won't let Ooh. a man just just treat you any kind of way. Come on. When you know who you are, when you know what you want, when you know what, who, what your purpose is, you will know if who he is fits into the continuity of who you are as an individual. Come on. You can interview a man without asking him a lot of questions to find out if he's the right one. Yes. I tell girls when I'm counseling them, and I do one-on-one, I've done some one-on-ones, you know, how does that look like? How do I get uh, become ready? And I have what you call a wife-ready boot camp. I do live in, I live in Atlanta and I'm preparing this summer as the book comes out to do wife. I've done three wife ready boot camps last year, two mm-hmm. in Houston, I did one in Cambodia. Yeah. yeah. Oh, International and the girls in Cambodia have the same questions as the ones in the States. It's wow. the same thing all it's over. All over. It's all so over. It doesn't matter. Same thing. What does that look like to be a wife? But in my small group wife ready boot camp intensive, you can read about it on wifeready.org. We take a deep dive into what that looks like as an individual. Just take a deep dive. We want to go all down into the layers because one of the things women want to know is how do I keep why or why or how do I keep from making the make wrong choices mm-hmm. and choosing the wrong guy? Mm-hmm. It's all about here. You attract who you are. Yeah. And when you get this That's right, so real. when you get this together, when this is here, when this <laughs> yeah. is whole, yeah. and you walk in the room and you're confident. Yes. You know, men they, they respond to confidence. Yeah, they do. They they respond to confidence, yes. and you you attract who you are, and you don't want to attract. You're gonna you want broken. You're broken. You're gonna attract brokenness. Come on. And you and I. That? I tell them you have to make a list of things, 10 things you want, can't stand, and 10 things you must have. Okay. 10 things that you will not compromise on a relationship. I'm not talking about flighty things. I'm talking about values. I'm talking about goals. I'm talking about dreams. I'm talking about character, integrity. Those things that you have to have. You know, it's it's a given. You're not going to, you don't want anybody who has addiction issues or, you know, who's mentally ill. Those are given. And then you can kind of just, there's a book called uh, Date or Soulmate, How to Know if Someone's Worth Pursuing After Two Dates. Mm. So you don't have to go and just be intertwined emotionally for years and mm-hmm. trying to figure, okay, after so long, this isn't the right guy. You already know who you are, you know. what you want, what you need, where you're going, where you're headed. Mm-hmm. And you can just maneuver the conversations around those questions without coming around and asking them, knowing that this is the right guy for you. It's like dating is collecting data. Yeah. I know there was a book that I always say Marcus was kind of on the, on the sneak. He was doing psychology. I think he was trying to figure out where I was. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, he was helping me. Because he was giving me all these books to read. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget, we were in school and that was one book. And I realized that, wow, okay, while we're dating, I'm really collecting data on him. He's collecting data on me to figure out where 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 am I? Exactly. You know, and that's really what a date should be. Mm-hmm. Time and of trust. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. Establishing Absolute, trust. Establishing trust. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. See, if, if, do, you have, do I have a future with this person? Now, mm-hmm. if you get into this thing and you figure out, okay, this isn't going to work. But you're still holding on. That's still something on here that needs to be fixed. Yes. Because yes. why hold on to something that has no future to it? Why? 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 Wow. Why invest all the emotions, all the time, all the you know? And I get Ooh. it. I get it that yeah. women are lonely. I get it. Yeah. But there's a difference between being lonely and alone. Yeah. Yeah. Lonely is you elect to be by yourself. Yes. Alone is a is a is a is an emotional. Mm. So I mean, loneliness is electing to be by yourself alone. You choose to emotionally. You're lonely. It's something going on and you just have to fill that with something. Yes. And not them filling with relationships. But wife really just helps you to walk Ooh. it. Just helps you to be confident in who you are as an individual. It's tight, but it's right. Yeah. Y'all. Yeah. It's, it's really because tight. Who, but it's who, right. who, I don't know anybody who signed up to get married mm. with the with the thought like, Okay, this is not going to work, but I'm going to test the waters and see what it looks like. I don't know anybody who signed up to get married who wanted to get divorced. Mm. No, no, I don't know anybody. I don't Ooh, know anybody. Know no, who's talking about? Okay, this is not going to work, so we, you know, we get divorced. You yeah. know, and we just we just try it out for a minute. No, I don't know anybody who willingly did that. Right. I have no idea who, anybody who does it. So, getting it right the first time, it's not being perfect, as I say, but it's about being wise. Yes, and it's just that's what the book is about. It's just helping women. It's not a long book because mm-hmm. I don't want people to be intimidated about a size and don't get the message. Right. Okay. So did you hear that? Get this book. That's what and it's <laughs> the not, bottom line. Yeah. You can make it through this book. Okay. Yeah. You need it. You and, need and it's, it. And it's it's not um it's not for the faint at heart. Mm. I'm a very straightforward person. It's it's some hope in there. Yes. But I'm telling you the truth Realness. of what you're going to be expecting to yeah. walk through when you get married. And you know what? I think that women and men uh, who are listening. I think that anyone who, like you said, desire to have a, a successful marriage, like you said, we don't go in it because we are expecting to for it to end in divorce, that you want straightforward information. You don't want all the fluff. You want the truth. You know, you want to know, yes, there's love, there's joy, there's happiness, 
but there's work. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that that piece right there. I mean, I think about the things that we went through, like who would have known that on April Fool's Day, you know, Marcus was going to get laid off. We had all these things laid out. Oh, you know, we're moving, moving me across country. And then Camille's coming and all right, I'm starting this. Mm-hmm. And Mark's like, oh, you can find a job because you're going to, you know, you'll, you'll be able to get a teaching position and you can do this or that. So we have this cushion. So we thought we were OK. Like, yeah. We're safe, you know, and literally it was real. You know, it was like the wedding date was almost like God saying, I'm giving you this beautiful bowl and we're just going to tie you tight together. Mm-hmm. And then after that, y'all are a package deal. But then now we're going to push you into the world. And I'll never forget uh, uh, Bishop George Brooks that married us. He used the money example. He took a five dollar bill. He said, you know, when it, when this thing has gotten crushed and he balled it up mm-hmm. and he said, you know what? It's still a five dollar bill no matter what it's going through. He said in the storms of life, you have to know that no matter what you go through, you know, you are still together. God is still with you. And you can't just, you know, but he let us know storms are coming. Mm-hmm. coming. And they, they, he didn't realize that, uh, yeah, as soon as we say I do and kiss and then leave, we're going to be like, uh, what are we about to do? Yeah, but con- <laughs> conflict is good because it creates a, dip- a deeper level of intimacy. Absolutely. You don't you know might. how someone really cares about you until you've been around the block a few times and had a you know, knock down, drag out, I'm going home to mama fight. Come on. And then come you on. come back and you Still one of them. It, it creates yeah. a different, a whole deep level of intimacy. You're right. And it's necessary, but you have to learn how to fight there. You got to learn how to fight a good there. fight. That's right. You do. That's and right. you learn those. I teach those couples that in, in, in premarital counseling, you know, the number one thing that men want is respect. Mm. It's innate in them. Absolutely. Everything rises and falls on how a man is, is respected. Yes. And if you don't respect him, he's going to get it from somewhere else. Come on. Not willingly. Not all the time because your daughter cannot respect him more than you can. Ugh. My my daughter cannot respect you know yeah. your, this mother cannot yeah. respect him more than you know than we can. That's, That's why. Right. So it's in aid in them, and they gravitate to the place where they respect it the most. They respect the most, and it should yeah. be a, it should be the wife. It should be. He's his That's heart right. so so set, so safely trust in you that he can walk into a room, see you in the corner with your friends, and know you're not talking bad about him. Yes. That's good. Even mm-hmm. even after you've had a huge fight to mm-hmm. so wherever you are and wherever, whatever event you all are together yes. and you're talking to your friends, he knows you got his back That's it. that you're not talking about him. That's we talk it. about that in the book. What does that look like? Yes. I'm not talking about being a doorman. I'm not talking about just uh, letting him run rush out of you. You have, you have your say, right. you, you, but there's a way to say it. You oh, can yeah. say anything Ooh. at any time as long as your tone is right. Let me tell you, I learned. I had yeah. to learn it. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, us and I, I mean, I have some friends on here. I, I'm, they're going to remain nameless unless they want to post uh, and share. But we are strong women, aren't we? Mm-hmm. We have strong opinions. Mm-hmm. You know, we just we have just we, we tell it like mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. And I can just remember, you know, um, God really humbling me because, you know, again, when you have a desire to do what's right. And if you call yourself a daughter of God or a son of God, God is going to deal with you. He's mm-hmm. going to. Deal with this right here. Mm-hmm. You know? And this right here. And this right here. Because mm-hmm. this and this mm-hmm. are connected together. Mm-hmm. And so I know, like, out of the abundance of my mouth, uh oh, did one of. <laughs> I got one. She's holding her mouth. She's going to remain named with Cheryl mm-hmm. Anderson. I see you. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, God, I'm just, and I'm grateful for God, Kim. Mm-hmm. I'm so grateful because I just really feel like, where would I be? Would me and Marcus still be here in this? this place if it was not for him really literally being that center mm-hmm. for us mm-hmm. like when if it went too far it rested on god yes. it was like you yeah. know what we're not gonna have weeks of not talking that's ridiculous we can't do that yeah you yeah. know we had to figure it out and i, I remember just going to god and and then finding in the word or either something you know that i was reading yeah. i found myself mm-hmm. and i and i had to come to myself and i had to not go to him because maybe he was already too angry to deal with, you know, me coming and, and pouring it out because you got to be wise. Yeah, I mean, and it's okay just, to be angry. Just Bible says just sin not. Yeah. It's okay to be So, angry. you know, I had to learn, okay, let me let him cool down, but let me try a different approach mm-hmm. and let me kind of bow out because I may have been offended too. Because a lot of times when we're both offended, yes. somebody has yes. to be somebody mature. Be to step somebody up. has to rise up. I mean, we're both mature, but to rise up, like you said, and step up and say, you know what? Mm-hmm. Let me, you know, look, oh Lord, look at Cheryl, help me bridle my tongue. Mm-hmm. Come on here, Cheryl. Yeah. And that's really what 
Um, you know, I just believe that that's the kind of ministry that women need to hear, that men need to hear. Mm -hmm. um, but but specifically, you know, I say I say for us because we are the vocal ones, we're the expressive ones. Mm -hmm. And when you said that men desire respect, you know, sometimes it's that um, I heard someone say, you know, there's some things um, that we go through that it's between me and God. Like, like you know, I might I might witness and share my testimony to some of y'all, and I might say, you know, um, I gave up this, that, or the other. But then there's some things that are so dear that I can't reveal to you. It's between me and God because maybe somebody else can do that. Maybe in somebody else's marriage, they can roll like that. That's why you have to be careful mm -hmm. oh, that you don't just yeah, and, and you don't just say, okay, I'm going to do what these people are doing because God may have a different plan. Oh, absolutely. And so I, you know, and that's why you can't just, okay, I'm going to look at what I see and base it on that. Or, yeah. Which is a huge part of what my first book was about. Ah, and say, mm. um, me, my man, and his music, my life as a musician's wife. Yes. It was, it's, this is the book where I did everything wrong. Mm. Gotcha. This is the book where I gotcha. wish I, you know, knew better. I was a little bit more mature, but yeah. I got it right. I mean, it, it's a great ending. Yes. But um, can I tell a little bit about myself? Absolutely. That segue yeah. into what you're saying. Let's this. tie in. Yes. When I uh, got married, I was married at 20 years old. 20 years old. Okay. Um, when I met my husband, I knew he was my husband the day I met him at 13. I can't tell you how. You I just see. knew it in my spirit. Mm -hmm. But what I, I talk about this in the book, not this book. I talk about it in my Unsay the Date. Okay. That the counterfeit comes before the real. Mm. And what the enemy say? has a way of giving. Ooh, okay, so look, Mark is not here, so my hands are going up. Oh, God. The counterfeit usually comes before the real. The enemy knows what you want. He hears you praying. He's read that list. He knows what you He has a way of just bringing someone who fits the mold of what you believe in God for, but not quite. Ooh. But what I've learned is that the counterfeit is the to be discerned, not dated. Mm -hmm. I dated the counterfeit. I talk about this in Unsafe Today. I dated the wrong guy okay. and got hurt. Come on. And all kinds of red flags too. were going on. Yeah. And I just overrode them. I'm thinking, no, you know, I just need to pray a little bit more. Mm. You know, and he was telling me he wasn't ready. But mm. I was like, no, but there's no way you can't be ready. I've waited two years. You've got to be the right one. <laughs> so you just knew. I just knew it. And mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a catastrophe. And anyway, that didn't work out. But God brought the real, right? He was just waiting yes. in line. He was waiting. You know, had I not fallen and prayed to that, I would have probably got him sooner. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I found out, um, I met him when he was 13. When I was 13, seven years later, I ended up uh, marrying him, 20 years old. And when I went into my relationship, I wanted what I saw that my parents had. My mother okay. was a stay-at-home mom. My dad worked. Your parents tell you to marry a man with a good job. Yes, they do. Make a good job, good benefits. Yes. And that's what I did. My husband was a bus driver at the time, but he had a vision for his life. He was okay. a musician. He wanted to travel the world and play the drums. And I would hear him say that. Yeah. I would hear him say, I want to go on the road one day, but it would go in one ear and out the other. Because mm. I didn't want to go on the road. What does that look like? Right. You know, I'm thinking, no, you you, you got a I'm job. You know, stable. no, yeah, no. I, right. I, and women need security. We need right. security. We need Even security. if we're not spenders. Right. We need security. We need to know that we're going to have the lights on. We know, need to know we're going to have electricity to heat the baby's bottle. Amen. Hey, you know, when we get home and push up the genie in the garage, the door going to go up because yeah. the power's on. Come on. It's yes. just that we just, we thrive on security. Yes. We just do. Absolutely. So, that was unstable for me. And but eight years into our relationship, the opportunity came for him to be able to play drums full time. Mm. And I wasn't having it. I was not on board. I'm thinking this cannot be. I said, this is not this. And we say this. I didn't sign up for this. Mm. Yes, I did. One of the chapters in this book called I Do But I Don't. Absolutely. For richer, for poor. I do, but I don't. The secret Help is us. Help He's us. saying I do. Oh but my God. I, I'm like, I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. Make a long story short. Um, he got a chance to travel the world, Okay, travel the world. And you know, my story five yes. years ago, my husband passed away. Yes. He passed away at the age of 46. Mm. I married him at the age of 22. Mm. Crystal, he had already lived half his life before I knew it. Wow. And you get a chance, and so I've been a widow for the last five and a half, half years. So you get a chance to kind of just look back over your life and think, okay, that was stupid. Why are we arguing about that? Yeah. That didn't make a difference. Yeah. That was just your opinion. Yeah. You were full of pride. I mean, you know, yeah. you, you take a look and think, what difference did it make? What difference did it make? What difference did it make? Yeah. After, after 20, 24 years of marriage, and you're thinking, what difference did that make? Wow. And even, I say this in one of my books, I don't know, but after five years, you know, you're going through something thinking, what will it matter? Mm. What what will it matter? I mean, 
And now I realize how much legacy matters. Wow. And if you're yes. going to your marriage legacy minded, you will, your actions will correspond and you will do things a little bit differently. You yes. will be so quick to say what's on your, on your heart mm -hmm. because you all truths need not be spoken. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to always hear what's going wrong. Yes, that's right. Especially on the yeah. phone when they can't do nothing about it. Yeah. Now, Marcus is going out of town and he says something going wrong here. That he calls. The last thing he want to do was he, and be worried about something he can't get home to fix. Right. You know, so why would you? Why, why, why would I even bring yeah, that up to him in, up. in his mind? Knowing, you it's, know, yeah. And I had to learn that my husband would travel, and I was so upset at the fact that he was gone, gone all the time. I got these two little kids, and anytime anything <laughs> go wrong, you call, you will hear what's wrong because you shouldn't have been out there in the first place. You left yeah. me in here with these kids by myself. I didn't sign up for this. So we let our tongue be a weapon. Be a oh. weapon. and so yes. going back to respect, men are going to gravitate to the place where they respect it the most. Yeah, if I'm respecting him. And I even said to him, I will never support you in this. Mm. Well, guess who was supporting him? Everybody out there Everybody who loved else. the way he played. Yeah. Everybody out there thought he was wonderful. Yeah. My little daughters who came home were glad to see him because he'd been gone for two or three days. Mm -hmm. They gravitate to the place where they respect it the most. Mm -hmm. But I said that I, well, I did everything wrong in this book, but I got my act together cat yeah. quick. Yeah. Because yeah. I knew that if I didn't, it was going to be over. Yeah. And not to say he did everything right. We both right. had wrong. We both as shortcomings, we both had to submit ourselves to yes. the authority of the word when it comes yeah. down to what a husband and a wife look like. Right. And thank God I got it together before, long before I was able to enjoy years of it being together before yes. he passed away. Mm -hmm. But in looking back, I'm thinking half that didn't even matter. Mm -hmm. It didn't even matter. And um, God is faithful. Yes. And he has a way of redeeming the time. He has a Man. way of restoring the things that we've lost. And, yeah. and and what the enemy stole, God had the enemy. The Bible said that God would give us back seven times, seven, seven. times restoration. Yes. So I believe in, I am believing God for another spouse. Amen. And it will be yes. seven times the restoration of what I, you know, things Praise that I've gone God. through. Yes. And what I want girls to get, if they don't get nothing mm -hmm. else from this so broadcast, good. is that your husband is not the enemy. Woo, the enemy is the enemy. Did you hear that? Oh, the enemy is the enemy. Thank and you he, for that reminder, because sometimes I'm just kidding. <laughs> the enemy is the enemy, and, and he hates your marriage, today. he hates your relationship, and he would do it. Stop at nothing to destroy it. <sighs> and if he can get you and him fighting, he knows you're not fighting against him. Mm. If he can get you and your husband fighting against each other, he knows you're not coming mm -hmm. against him. You are a unified front. And you know what? And I'm sure, you know, guys, we're going to put this book up as well. I know that we came for what we were talking about, wife mm -hmm. ready, and, but let me tell you something. I, you know, I'm just seeing some, some, some things unfolding just about the, the mistakes, you know, and the power of that, that testimony, you know, that, that you were being transparent and allowing us to see, because I'm telling you the vision, you know, a lot of us have husbands that have big visions, mm -hmm. they have mm -hmm. dreams and, and they're doing, you know, cause I think about what you said about he was working, you know, his nine to five. But I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. But in the back of his head, God is calling him to something greater. And it's like the worst situation to be in is for your spouse to not be under, you know, to support that and to support it vocally as well as like mental because it's emotional. When you're trying to push out destiny, it's it's an emotional thing. You know, it is not something that's like, you know, oh, you know, because sometimes you get tired mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. you're your own cheerleader. And and so it's you and then it's your your spouse mm -hmm. and it's not anybody else and so like that that's so crucial like I think about I know uh you know friends on here you know husband my, my dear friend Cheryl husband who is a, a dynamic preacher man of God and working for for FCA for for years you know serving his pastor but hearing the call of God on his life and I see how you know, she is coming on board and supporting. And no, do we always understand everything? No, we don't. I mean, that's like this jerk. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I mean, and God did. I mean, this man will forever be known mm -hmm. in the history of gospel mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. contemporary and jazz and, and mm -hmm. R&B all over yeah. because of how gifted he is as a musician. Yeah. And when you think about the magnitude of the anointing that was on his life yes. and that that was frustrating, yes. it was you know, very it's frustrating. very frustrating yeah. because like you said, it's, you know, what the enemy will do is he'll use our words and our, you know, our lack of, you know, being, you know, just praying too. Mm -hmm. Cause some, mm -hmm. this is what I, I mean, y'all, I struggle with that. Sometimes you don't want to pray. I tell my mother, listen, <laughs> It's just, well, you know, get on your knees. I'm like, listen, I, I get the flesh it. Don't always pray. The flesh yeah. does not always want to pray yeah. when you're upset and frustrated with your spouse. 
you know, I'm, I'm maturing to that. Come on. I need y'all to help me to continue to mature to that yeah. because I had to realize that, wow, you know, God does fight my battles for me, though, mm-hmm. when I get on my knees. It is true. When and I, he tells us in Exodus, he will fight for us if we keep still. Mm, if we keep still. If we stand, stand still. still. Yes. And see the salvation of, of the Lord. Lord. Just, you know, just you just just chill. I got this. Yes. You know? I can't tell you many times the Lord has to deal with me on that. Wow. Yeah, if, I, yeah, I, I got this. Up. He is my son before he's your husband. Oh, did you hear that? He belonged to me before I gave him to you. Come on. And everything God and I was I was complaining one time, and I felt like the Lord saying, "Everything you have outside of me is a bonus. Mm. I'm all that you need. I'm all that you need. You get to be married. Oh, you get to be a mom. Okay, I feel like I'm gonna have to get out of my chair. <laughs> you and get run to around. do that. Okay, and if you don't want to do it, I can. You know, we can handle that. Yeah. But I, I trusted you with my heart, my son's heart. What are you going to do with it? Mm, he's trusting he's us. He's trusting us with, with you know, with uh, you know, and then sometimes and the mouth can get us in trouble Jesus. a lot of times. And I'm thinking, what would I feel like on the other side of that time? I have to write that down. <laughs> he is trusting us. God is trusting us as wives with the hearts of his sons. Of his sons. Of his, that's, that's his son. That's powerful. That right there. You can, you can destroy him, you can tear him up, or you can break him down with your tongue. Mm. You don't need your fist to do that. Our mouths can do that. The mean, the emasculate, that is one of the things about women that just makes my blood boil is yeah. to literally hear them demean and, and emasculate a man. And it, it, I mean, yes, they do act like children sometimes. Yeah. I tell I tell them in my wife ready boot camps, inside every man is a punk and a prince, a mm. king and a kid. Mm-hmm. And the one you speak to the most is the one he will be. Speak to the prince in him. Speak to the king in him. Y'all, I can't type this fast. It's too much good stuff. Y'all just have that. to I get these books. I talk about that in the book. I talk about. I mean, it, 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 it's 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 holy it's ghost. Everything. Wait a minute. <laughs> we got. My, I, let me tell you something. You you need to say that again. It, it, it's like every man. man is a punk and okay. a prince, a king and a kid, and the one that you speak to is the one that he will be. They don't want to be spoken to like kids, no matter how how childish they act at times. I can't even take this right now, y'all, because I'm thinking about the I'm thinking about the men who have not been declared properly, you know, by whether it be by their spouse. I'm thinking about the father to the to the son. I'm thinking about the what you just said, the punk to the prince. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about the kingdom, the, 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 the man of God that rises up and takes authority and that knows how to be yet a gentle soul mm-hmm. with his children, mm-hmm. you know, but you speak. So that's the power yeah, of it's, our it's words. Speaking to the man that you want him to become, not as you Ooh. see him. To every mother yeah. on here, to every mother of, of a son. I mean, that's huge, yes, that's even huge. for yes. me. I just, there's a, so our words, they do... Yeah, what you repeatedly hear, you will, you will eventually believe. Ooh. You keep hearing, you, you will eventually believe it. And the words means everything. My and God. I had to learn that. Mm. My daughter is her, my youngest daughter's love language is um, physical touch. Okay. And she's a very affectionate. Okay. My love language, like Marcus, is acts of service. So okay. I give love like I receive love. Okay. Hers is physical touch and, and she and words of affirmation. My husband's love language is words of affirmation. Okay. She couldn't even talk. Well, she meet him at the door la, 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 and run, <laughs> hug him and run off. Okay. And I learned how to affirm my husband watching my little daughter. Wow. Because it didn't come natural for me. It came natural for but her. But it came natural for her. They had that. But I, I had yeah. to learn how to do that. If I wanted to be the one standing at the door, I, I didn't want him calling me on the phone asking to speak to her. Mm. Because she was affirming him because I didn't know how to do it. Because you didn't know how to do it. Look at that. I had to learn yeah. how to do it. If I wanted the affection that he had, that I, he was yeah. that, that was going on, I wanted I needed to get in this thing too. Yeah. I learned how to affirm him and love him by watching her when she was small. Wow. Because I saw the way that he responded to that. She wouldn't even couldn't even say anything. It was mm. her demeanor. It was she's just... standing at the door waiting him, waiting wow. on him to come home. Wow. He would he called on the road sometime. Let me speak to Simone. Wow. And she nah, 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 and then run off. He said, I love that. Wow. Look I don't know that. what she said. I love that. It was the way she said it. It was the mm-hmm. way it made him feel. So we need to be students of one another. I mean, I see that, you know, that that's some information that we will gain, you know, because let me tell you, I'm, we're going to have to have yeah. a, what I want to do is have like a group of women. We've got to come together and really, you know, 
there's there's just so much it's out of what you've endless, already yeah. shared. And I'm like, I can't even I can't even put all the quotes down that are being shared because and I see you all commenting on here and I see my mom. She says, thank you for sharing good, practical, spiritual discussion. And God is trusting wise with the hearts of his. Amen. Taria, I can't even get over that right now. The, the, how how sacred it's it's so serious yeah, it is you know? it is i remember and uh, i know we get ready to land this plane but i want to yes. share this one story i think the story is in here and this is how powerful and impactful it is to have a god-centered marriage a christ-centered marriage because he gives us wisdom mm -hmm. Je james 1 and 5 you don't know what to do ask him mm. he said he'll give it to you and he won't be mad you can ask as many times liberally as you want. yeah well i had gotten past my uh pouting stage or i i didn't sign up for this stage or this thing what I wanted in the marriage stage, and it was if God, I knew God called me to him, then I need to just get over myself. I finally did get over myself four years after he had been on the road. And my husband, Marvin McQuitty, was the drummer for Fred Hammond in the 90s. Yes. So all of the face to all of this, excuse me, face to face with the organization, but all of the glory to God glory and to blessed God and, and, and that, all of that spirit of David, spirit of David pages and of life, pages of life one and that's two. all him playing. So you know yeah. how huge Fred was back Absolutely. in the 90s. I was pregnant with my youngest daughter, and I'm oldest one was two years old, so I'm having two, they're 25. I'm 23 yeah. now, but it was difficult. It was yeah. very, very difficult. A lot but I got past that and I got to the point where I was on board with it. I'm like, okay, you've called us. When God calls the man, he calls his family. Mm. God spoke to me and you know, used me to take my experiences to speak to other musicians' wives. And that's what this book is about. It was a family thing. He called yeah. us to speak to marriages. Mm. And I was going to be somewhere sucking my thumb and licking my wounds because I didn't yeah. have a man who had a job work from nine mm. to five. He's like, I'm not that guy. I'm not a cutty, yeah. cookie cutter guy. I'm not that yeah. guy. So I was praying one day, kind of past all of that and kind of got myself together. And I was praying. I said, God, I said, I'm over the fact that he's gone all the time. I said, but I just, you know, I know he's doing what you want him to do. I'm on board with that. Thank you for changing my heart. I said, but I just want my husband home. Yeah. I want to spend time with him. I yeah. said, God, would you bring him off the road? Mm -hmm. I said, bring him off the road. I was kind of play, praying and complaining. I call it a, a, a prayer plaint. <laughs> praying a prayer, prayer plank, complaining yes. and praying at the same time. I said, God, just bring him off the road. I said, we need him. You know, the girls yeah. are older, but I just want to, I want my husband. Right. You know, I didn't get married to be single. No. I didn't get married to be no, by myself. be a single mom. You know, no. I didn't do all that. Yes. And I got up off of my knees and the Lord said to me, he said, for the next year, I want you to have a card, a love letter, or a trinket mm. for him when he comes home. Okay. I said, God, you must have, there must have been some misunderstanding. <laughs> I said, I asked you to bring him home. <laughs> I said, for the next year, I'm thinking it probably wouldn't have been a year had I not been complaining about it. it probably would have did it sooner. But anyway, mm. so every time I would pick him up from the airport, I made sure when he came home, there was a card, there was a trinket, there was a letter, there was something mm. of chocolate, whatever he liked, on his pillow. It got to the point, Crystal, he would, we would pull up in the garage. I mean, there were some times that I would go to Walgreens on the way to the baggage claim, pick it's him up yeah. while he's getting his, his luggage. I'm running in there, putting Just it on the pillow. It, yeah. it got to the point where that's the first place he went when he came home oh, every man. single trip yeah, and did it for a year gosh. that love letter that trinket that thing and when my husband passed away and I was playing out his things he had every card every card every letter every trinket because you administered because I, to that language you were speaking the language of love that he knew and it was and I was right and, and he kept those things 15 yeah. years later yeah, yeah. it meant spoke I didn't know what I was doing I was doing what God told me to do and that thing transformed me and in that season of our marriage things just started to just change right. i had to break my heart i mean because it wasn't about me yeah. it was about it was about what he needed in that season and god used him vice versa several seasons in our life to minister to me in that way but every card that i gave him he still had it mm -hmm. and that that was had been 15 years later wow. he kept it yeah and it, that's why it's so important to be sensitive to the voice of the lord because mm. we never know we never know we never know so did y'all hear that? We have to be sensitive to the voice of the Lord. He wants to lead us and guide us. I hear you, Lord. I'm grateful for the time that I have. You know, I think about, um, you know, we've been feeling like our schedules, things in our lives have been moving fast forward. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm like, oh, like, like, you know, you got to go here. You get, where, where do you, you know, and then sometimes I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it like sneaks up for me. I'm like, oh, you're going. And you spoke so to that. Like you spoke just right then to, you know what? Be grateful for the season that that we're in, but then Lord help me to navigate it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what mm -hmm. it is. I need we need God to help us navigate through the seasons of change. You know whether it be, um, and I I just I think it's just so powerful because you're right. We we didn't order you know like our spouse and push a button and say okay 
We want you to be here these days of the week, make this amount X, Y, Z. It's always a God ordained thing, you know? And if you know that, 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 that God is, is using your spouse in a tremendous way or has given them something that they're passionate about, you know, it is our job to undergird, to support, to pray, you know, and to ask God, what, yeah. you know, how do I do this? Yeah. Where do and I fit into that? Do? Where do I fit in? Yeah. yeah. And that's just so yeah. key. And I mean, then he would need to do that for you too, because you right. have a purpose and your sole purpose is not just to be a wife. Absolutely. There's yeah. something that God has called you to do individually that you're responsible for, but he will come alongside you and help you to get to that place where God's called. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's a unit. It's, it's a, a unit. Yeah. He calls a man, he calls his family and you all have a, a there's a purpose to marriage. It's not yes. just about you not being by yourself anymore. Right. There's a purpose to marriage that God has ordained. And that's why it's so important to get the one that he has hmm. suitable. Not only there's not only one person on the planet for you, right. but there's one that's more suitable according to the purpose that God has for your according life. According to the purpose. Yeah. And that's what I, it's all about. I can, about purpose. I can say this, you know, I told you about like, okay, we had the storm and, you know, finances were the first storm that hit because when we got married, it was like layoff. So then it took Marcus several times to, you know, get a position. Then it was like layoff after layoff. It mm -hmm. seemed like, Enron and all these things were hitting us in the face when we first moved here. And then I got a position in the school and thank God what it was is like, it seemed like my funds overlapped. And then when he was, you know, we were able to do that, but then it got to a point where he sold into my dream. You know, my dream was, I, I want to be able to teach a private school. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be able to help children in an intimate way instead of having to, you know, feel the weight of a school district's policy, you know, to stick to that. And that's the only way they can learn. And so he believed in that. And so there was a season of time where it was like, okay, little by little, you know, we're going to, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And so then, you know, just like you said, you have to weather, you know, the storm will one another because then when it got to a place where I needed to sacrifice a little more, you know, because you mentioned like, you know, you, your mom was at home. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our, you know, our vision may be different from, I mean, God's vision for us yes. is totally different from what he had for like your, your, what he had for Absolutely. your parents Absolutely. in order to push for yes. this vision. Yes. Yes. You know, it yes. may cause both of you putting your hands to the plow mm -hmm. for, you know, for a season and, you know, just, just different things, you know, so yeah. it's, it's so important to hear God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and obey, trust mm -hmm. in him, trust and obey mm -hmm. for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. That's awesome. what we have to do. Awesome. This has been good. I almost don't want to let you go because I'm like, okay, I know. And, and I just want to say this there. We, we've had some really awesome Comments that have come on here. Uh, there's a sister on here that says she had a counterfeit for 10 years. My oh, God. sweet Lord. Let me tell you something. I know about that counterfeit, yes, but I thank God. Mm -hmm. I tell I said one for the father, two for the son, three for the whole. After three, he's like, look, I'm yeah. pulling you out of this. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I made up my mind mm -hmm. that it was it was God's will and not my own. But it took three strikes for me in my life to say, you know, and it wasn't through marriage, thank God, but it was just through relationships, you know, that just weren't right. Yeah, and point where you know you deserve better. When you, yeah, you deserve better. When you know that, and, yeah. and you know, when you lay that on down, and one last thing to what you said about what you're trapped and what's in your heart, mm -hmm. I thought about as my priorities began to line up with what God, how God saw me, and I began to honor him and, and just put my eye on him. Mm -hmm. Like he became the object of my desire and me wanting to please him just kind of superseded everything else. Mm -hmm. Then I noticed that, like you said about the law of attraction, certain individuals didn't even come my way. Exactly. So like, you know, you're like, well, how do you know which one is right? Yeah. Well, because that glow on you, I think that's mm -hmm. like the, that's the unfiltered Holy yes. Ghost. That's, that's you don't exactly need a filter. Mm -hmm. You don't need to put this on Snapchat yeah. and try to get a look to try to fool somebody. No, this was the glow and, and, of God. And a man can tell that too. They and they, they didn't tell. even, you know, they're like, oh, we can't touch her. Yeah. We can't even, mm -hmm. I can't even speak to her. And so I believe in that, yeah. like that God will just, you know, the spirit mm -hmm. will just weed out, you know, what is not right. But then, you know, once in a while, one will try to ride up and I call them a test. A test came even in the Holy Spirit time. Like, mm -hmm. and but I recognize yeah. it. And I was yeah. like, oh. Yeah, you already because uh, you know you know who you are. You know you who know you who are. are. So when the test comes, you just like, yeah. mm -hmm. nah, can't mm -hmm. do that. You only can't gonna go track there. you know, a certain caliber of man. I can sit down and have a conversation with a man right now. And in 10 minutes, I know if there's a future for us. Because mm, I on. know what God's called me to do. I know what I'm looking for. I'm not in the stage of marrying someone to be a homemaker and raise kids. I'm, 50, I'm 50 years old. Come on, I'm here. beyond that. I'm about purpose. Come on. If you can't help me get to what God's called me to be as an individual, we can't help each other in my purpose, 
you know, I'm, I'm not sending, I'm not having any more babies. Right. I'm in a totally different season. Different what I needed season. at 20 years old, I yeah. don't, I need differently now at 50 years old. Come on. And I know who I am. Yes. I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm not on this quest to find out what that looks like. I know what God has called me to do. And Come I know on. what he has purpose in my heart to do. And yes. I know if you fit into the continuity of that. Mm. So I don't, we don't need to go off a of coffee. We don't need to exchange numbers. Because I already know what I'm, I know who I am. Don't even try it. But I, 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 I know that who I am. Yeah. I, I know who I am. And it's not a arrogance. It's no, confidence. It's the confidence. It's yeah. confidence. Come on. It this didn't come overnight. Come on. Come on. This did not come it, overnight. Yeah. It took. Yeah. I see myself the way God sees me and yeah. what he has promised me and who I am in him. And then that's who I'm going to align my future align with. Align your future with. And I was just somebody for the sake of having a man. Women, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Marriage is not a necessity. Don't do it. Marriage is not a necessity. It's not a necessity. Ooh. Let me tell you something. Yeah. You don't want to go through that years of mm -hmm. pain and, you, you know, and, and two people suffering. Why would you? It's not worth it. It's not worth mm -hmm. any of that. Mm -hmm. If we could just take you and just take you with us into every dating situation, because you said in 10 minutes. Oh, I can If tell. you need counseling. So are you doing Because I know. Um, are you doing online counseling? I do. I do. I do do the online counseling. I do um, help women identify areas in their life that want to help them get ready for marital readiness on the individual level. Okay. We do wife ready boot camps. If someone wants to bring the wife ready boot camp to their church, we're doing yes. a session. We're doing a group. Okay. Marcus, you was, was, did the last one with me last yes. year. We did one here in Houston. It was phenomenal. Great turnout. Lots of questions. Uh, we really get raw and relevant and tell the truth. Awesome. And so that's what uh, the Wife Ready Bootcamp individual sessions, but Kim.McQuitty okay. at gmail.com is where I can be reached. Okay. If anyone wants to do that, or they can go online on wifeready.org and hit me up there, Kim.McQuitty at gmail.com. Those of you that are Instagram, if you want to follow me at Wife Ready, I post different excerpts from the book and also things about marriage from my heart just kind of um, to uh, speak to the heart of women. And lastly, on May 17th, I'm going to start doing uh, 15 minute talks about different subject matters pertaining to being wife ready. Okay. Coming up with the book. So I'll be posting more information about that on wife ready uh, awesome. on Instagram, but they can follow me at wife ready and just um, the book will be out this summer. I'm excited mm -hmm. about it. It's um, I am too. It's, it's gotten a lot of attention. People are like, unsafe but they just. It's really a catchy title. It's like, wait, that so. makes so much sense. Put the brakes on. Come on. Pump the brakes. Let me see Come what on. I'm about to sign up for. Am I really ready to, to buy combine my life with somebody mm -hmm. else's and no longer be about me, but about we? And that's huge. I, I like just, my independence. I just see you helping so many people. <laughs> like I see just even off of that title. You know, I know God gave you that. And I just believe he gave you that for a reason because he wants to infiltrate not only the body of believers, mm -hmm. but even those who are out in, in, in sec, you know, sectors of society where, you know, they're maybe working in celebrity status. Mm. And I believe that they need to unsave a date, yep. just, you know, because they need help, you mm -hmm. know, because you don't want to be a public failure. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care how much money you make. You don't want to be a public figure. It impacts generations. It impacts it, it, generations. It, 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 your, children impact your children are it, suffering. They're, they're going yeah. to be impacted. They're yeah. going to be impacted. No matter what. No matter what. They're, they're going to be impacted. impacted. Mm -hmm. And even in older, you know, because I know like some individuals who their parents were in an older phase of life, but contemplating on separating. And we're talking like 30, 40 years. My God. And these are grown ups. Mm -hmm. And these grown children were hurt emotionally by because you don't want to see you know, like, like you said, marriage was designed as, is like that, that wall that's just fortified. It's connected. You expect it. You, you know, especially with your parents, it's yeah. like, you're like, yeah. you know, to see that, you know, it's like a part of you is mm -hmm. tearing mm -hmm. no matter what mm -hmm. age. So we mm -hmm. think, oh, it's only when they're little, but mm -hmm. no, these are adults that are in their mid thirties mm -hmm. and they're watching their mm -hmm. parents. And it's, it's tough. And even the kids who are impacted as a child, 50% of them are still impacted or dealing with their parents' divorce. That's into still, their own, into their own relationship, into their own relationships, yeah. and they don't even know why. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It, it's 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 it impacts generations, and that's why we just have to stop it right now. We have to. Yeah. We have to. You know, there's no reason to rush to the altar. Don't rush. To there's the no altar. reason to rush to the altar. A rush to get a dress. Yeah. Don't yeah. rush to get a marriage. Uh, what is it? The consultant yeah. to do all your stuff yeah. and, yeah. and to do all these TLC shows stuff yeah. that. No. No, it's not. It's, it's not. not it's not working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, I would love for us to, to end our time with prayer. Mm -hmm. I just feel like there's no other way that we can do it. I feel like that you have so much, there's, there's so much word in you. There's so much life. There's so much life giving 
just just the spirit of God that just I think you will just pour it out to anyone that is watching this that maybe, uh, you know, has gone through A to Z, all of these things that we've dealt with. And maybe those of you who are, you know, like I said, in our in a position of our daughters, you know, anticipating that one day you're that lady in waiting, you're that that soon to be bride and you want to get this good, healthy advice. You want to be ready. You know, you want to be ready for the one that comes and you also want to be, uh, you know, not only ready so that he can see you and be the right one, mm -hmm. but you want to be ready by saying, OK, these are things that I know I, I want to do. This is how I want to contribute, you know, to this relationship in a healthy way so that you don't end up making mistakes. You know, and I think it's so powerful because what we've experienced today is you pouring in every generation, I believe what women we have got to speak life into each other. We've got to tell each other the truth. We have to help pull each other up. We have to help the young women yes, that are coming after us. We have a responsibility. Yes, to hear this is what we did. Like you said, this book here, there were a lot of mistakes in here. Mm -hmm. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Because we don't we we need this so that when we read it, when we listen to the stories of life, we grow from that. Mm -hmm. And we make, as my husband likes to say, make new mistakes. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. Don't yeah. make no, the yeah, same mistakes. No, don't go to the same class I went to. No. I'm, I'm giving you the, the, the cliff notes. Absolutely. This is the come cliff on. notes. You ain't got to do that. You know, if you just take that exam and pass it, you ain't got to yeah. go through some of the hard yeah. knocks that I've done. And a lot of times hurt people hurt people. Do, let's not yeah. do that. Let's be the body of Christ and let's love one another and let's be real. So I thank God for you. Thank you. I'm so grateful that I'm yeah. here. I'm like, oh, Marcus, oh, well, because <laughs> I'm telling you, if we have to go to Atlanta or whatever we need yeah. to do, I just really feel that it, it would be just so awesome for a wife ready retreat. I know we've got to have mm -hmm. you here. Mm -hmm. We've got to have you here. I'm speaking that into global outreach community. Yeah. We, we need to have a wife ready retreat yes. and bring yes. Miss Kim in uh, to just pour in. And then, like I said, we're going to support and Definitely make sure that we pump when this book is yeah. ready to go out. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said wifeready.org. Wifeready.org for the unsafe okay. date book. If they want to get the Me, My Man, and His Music, yes. they can just email me at kim.mcquitty at gmail. At gmail. And, and I, I can post send them that. information on how to get that. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's let's yes, just touch yeah. and agree. And you just speak life. And I'm okay. just going to agree with you in prayer. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, your yes, mercy, sir. and your grace. We thank you for who you are. We yes. thank you that you are concerned about everything that concerns us. Thank you for you your daughters that yes. are with us, with us today. Thank you for this time that Chris and I got a chance to share what marriage looks like and what your heartbeat when it comes down to marriage. Yes. Now, for those who are viewing and those who will be watching the rebroadcast, I ask you right now that you just touch their heart. Yes. The woman that is looking to get married and wondering what's taking so long. Where is he? What's going on? Mm -hmm. God, that you will comfort her and know that you are in this season the best cousin that she could ever have yes. while you're preparing her, while you're preparing him. God, to the woman, God, who's engaged, who may not even be insured, or make sure that he may not be the one kind of going back and forth. And God, I thank you, Lord, that you would give her the courage of what she needs to do to make the next step. Yes. To the divorced woman, God, who may be wondering what went wrong in her first marriage, some yes. things she see that she pointed out in some of the conversations that we had today. God, you are a healer. You yes, are a healer you and you are a restorer. Thank so you, I thank you. Right now that you're healing her heart, that you're yes, giving her wisdom Jesus. in what to do and moving forward, that she's seeking out, God, youth, that you can lead her and guide her into truth, God, that she thank can you, overcome Father. in those areas, God, where she has been uh, stumbled. So, Father, I thank you right now thank for you, this book Jesus. that's coming out this summer, Lord, yes, that it will Lord fall Jesus. into the hands of the women that you have designed to read it. Jesus. And, God, that they won't let the words in this book just fall on stony heart, but, God, it will penetrate into their, their heart. Yes, it will get into their spirit, God, and they will want to take the necessary steps to do what needs to do. They it needs to be Lord. done, God, in order for their hearts to be ready for the prince that you have for them, yes, for the king that you have for them. Yes, those Jesus. that are tired of waiting, those that maybe get weary of the waiting, I think of that you're renewing their strength, yes, God. Strength know that Lord. you're preparing him as you're preparing them. And in your timing, you, in your God. season, at the right time, God, right you will time. make it happen. Yes. So, God, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we've had thank to come you, before Jesus. you. God, an opportunity to share. And I ask you right now, Lord, that you would just let your word, the word that we said today, God, begin to take root in our hearers. Yes, and we thank God. you for the fruit 
that's going to bear fruit, God, thank as a result you, of our time together. We honor you. Yes, we thank God. you. I pray, pray a special blessing for Marcus thank over you, Marcus Jesus. and Crystal and this you, and major, this the Holmes family, God, thank over you. this home. God, I thank you, Lord, even in their own marriage and their relationship, God, mm -hmm. you're bringing them closer together thank as you, never before. God, I thank you. You're putting a hedge of protection around this ministry, you, the Lord blended Jesus. family ministry. God, is so important. So many families are being attacked. And blended families even more so. But I thank yes. you right now, Lord, that you're covering their marriage, thank that you're you. covering their family, that you're covering their ministry by your blood. Thank and we you, thank God. you for the work that you're doing again that's going to reach the multitude and lives will be changed, glory impacted for thank the you. glory of God. So we yes. honor you, we praise you, and we thank you because you're a good God. father. In yes, Jesus' you name, are. amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Bless amen. you. Lord, yes. mercy. Woo! I know y'all want this to go on for an extra hour, but guess what? You're going to have to get the book. Yeah. <laughs> and we yeah. hope to have you back, yes. I mean, even if it's, you know, it, by Atlanta way. Because mm -hmm. I know we, we would love to do that. Yes. Yes. And I think this was just a great opportunity for our audience to just be able to hear what God is doing. And we just thank God it is well. Awesome. All awesome. right. Y'all tune in next week. Yes. And I can't promise that it'll be as, as amazing as this one oh, because I don't I think this was just phenomenal. Some female time. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm yeah, teasing. Girl, he knows mm -hmm. it's 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 all good. It's always a blessing. And and we just thank God. And you guys tune in next time. Looking forward to it. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yay, awesome. we did it. That was good. I enjoyed that. So oh, thank you for having there me. is a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of comments on here scrolling. And, and I'm telling you, you, oh my goodness, you touched on so many things. I just said, God, I'm just grateful. Yeah. You know, I'm grateful. We have been, we've been very, very blessed. I mean, there have been seasons of, you know, ups and downs. But, you know, another thing we never forgot that the same pastor that married us said, some of the F's of marriage, family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. finances, uh, of course, fornication, mm -hmm. okay, uh, friends, mm -hmm. okay, and, it, and it's like, you know, we began thinking like, you know, finances, what ends up getting attacked, you know, friendships, when you bring your family in and let them get caught in between, you know, and these are the things that we never forgot because it was so simple mm -hmm. that we would catch like, uh, you know, and, and I'm so grateful, like, just to have a husband like that because, you know, that's mm -hmm. key. If is one is... Uh oh, mm -hmm. that's him. Let me put him on. Let me put him on speaker real quick. Are you on the plane? In the broadcast. I did. I did. I did. I was still listening to it. We still listening. I did. Make sure you in the broadcast on your computer. Oh, okay. On the red one as well. On the red computer. On the red computer. All right. Bye, y'all. I'm ending the broadcast. I thought I had ended it. <laughs> That's why I don't need to do the technology side. You got to be here. Okay, but it's okay. We said them crazy things. Exactly. Out. I was just a. I'm keeping it, keeping it real all the way though. This was when I tell you, just, just eye opening and and awesome. I mean, for me, because I'm just like we just want Marcus. You want to say anything before we, um, you know, before Kim leaves and before you fly out? I'll take me back to the airport. No, uh, uh, Kim. Thanks again. Sincerely, sincerely appreciate it. And um, I wish you um, well. I think this book is going to be a hit. Um, please market it because it is definitely not. Yeah, that's going to be an amazing book. Well, thank you for having me. That's what you said. What was that again? Sh yeah, look, Cheryl. I just went off. But they got the outro. They got the outro. That's what I'm saying. I was giving the outro. So they know it's real. All right, Marcus. Yes. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. So what I need for you to do is go on... And I'm going to text you um, all of these, or maybe maybe you can text Marcus the links um, as far as the website. I put the website up. I put the email address, uh, but I want you to maybe you can do like an after post, you know, like in your big post that you usually do, and you can include those in there. Um, if she'll text those to you, you hear me? The um, her email address.
for her books and as well as like for counseling or for the engagements and then also the website for wife ready so you can just include those in your overall post okay she said she's still here i i tell you marcus end the post just shut 